welcome to our first video lesson. Ngayong araw, tatalakayin natin ang tungkol sa nature, goals, and perspective of social science. Kaya ano pang hinihintay mo? Maghanda ka na ng iyong papel at ballpen, i-take note ang mga importanteng data at information na mapupulot sa video lesson na ito. Muli, ako Sir Fitz, your ultimate teach guy, your guide for your meaningful learning experience. Kita kids! Hello! And welcome back to this video lesson. Our first topic for this subject will be regarding with nature, goals, and perspectives of social science. I hope that you are ready. Please get your study notebook and your ball pen. Take note of the important details and facts that you will encounter throughout of this video lesson. Objectives of our lesson are the following. At the end of this topic, you should be able to discuss the nature, goals, and perspectives in or of anthropology, sociology, and political science. These particular three disciplines are also under what we call as the social science. Specifically, this discussion aims to, number one, you should be able to recognize the nature, goals, and perspectives of the different disciplines in social sciences. When we are saying nature, goals, and perspectives, this will also reflect to the main ex explanation of the subject. Second objective is for you to identify the different key personalities in the development of anthropology, sociology, and political science. When we are referring to key personalities, these are the different people that, that contributed a lot on the field of social sciences. And last objective is for you to reflect on the importance of social science in societal progress and their individual improvements. Our lesson through this activity. So I will be presenting different pictures that you need to interpret. You need to write your interpretation to your study notebook. Okay? Write your interpretation to your study notebook and I will give you enough time or you can post the video while you are writing your interpretation. Is that okay? Very good. Let's proceed to our lesson. First picture. Ready for the next picture? Second picture. And the last picture. Okay. Okay, so i-process natin ngayon yung mga sagot ninyo from the previous activity. So I will be presenting different questions that you need to relate on your answer. Okay, first question. How do you interpret the following pictures? Are you the type of person that during interpretation, you're just giving your own personal reason or personal ideas? Or are you the type of person that, that are getting data and facts before giving interpretation? And the second question, do you perform searching or browsing the internet to give a good interpretation? Are you the type of person that is satisfied on performing research before giving an interpretation para mas valid at mas maganda yung, in yung interpretation na gagawin? And lastly, why it is important to interpret this kind of situations and its impossible or possible impact to the society and to the individuals? Are you the type of person that on the interpretation itself, you are looking to the relevance of the situation or the issues that you are going to have an interpretation? So definitely, all of us have different kinds of interpretations. Lahat tayo, iba-iba tayo mag-interpret ng bagay. Since lahat naman ng bagay sa mundo ay pwedeng bigyan ng kahulugan. At isa yon sa mga pinakamagandang karakteristik ng isang tao. Dahil tao lang naman ang may kakayahang magbigay ng kahulugan sa mga bagay-bagay. But always re Interpretation is not an easy job at all. Okay? Why, sir? Bakit mahirap mag-interpret on the first place? Unang-una, time-consuming. Okay? 
for you to have a good interpretation, you need a lot of time. Okay? More period of time, better interpretation. Shorter period of time, definitely, mas mababaw yung magiging interpretation natin. Okay? Next factor is resources. Gaano ba kalawa yung resources na meron ka para magkaroon ng mas magandang daloy ng interpretation sa mga bagay-bagay? And then, level of understanding. Gaano mo kaalam yung issue na gusto mong bigyan ng interpretation? Higit sa lahat, gaano ka ka-aware doon sa mga bagay na gusto mong sabihan ng interpretation or ng opinion? Process. How you will process the issue itself? Are you the type of person that is not totally processing the holistic approach or holistic perspective of the issue? Or you are just only giving your partial perspective on that particular scenario? Researching. Are you the type of person that has the full capacity to perform good research on that particular scenario for you to have a good interpretation? And analysis. Are you the type of person that before giving an interpretation, you analyze first the data, you break down the data, and then give a synthesis from that particular issue? And the relevance, at the same time, you are looking to the importance of that issue. What would be the impact of that issue after you give an interpretation to it? And one of the important factors of that is the validity. Does your interpretation is relevant by means of scientific method or scientific steps? Or you follow a scientific process and protocols according to a particular research standards? So all of this is part of what we call studying. Diba? Before we give interpretation, it is almost similar na inaaral muna natin yung mga bagay-bagay bago natin bigyan ng kahulugan. Hindi natin pwedeng bigyan ng kahulugan ng isang bagay kung hindi naman natin ito na aral ng gusto. Kaya dapat, para magkaroon tayo ng mas magandang interpretation sa mga bagay-bagay, aralin natin itong mabuti by means of giving all of these particular factors. From this studying, we can also say that it is equal to science. Remember that science is a systematized body of knowledge. It is the knowledge itself. It is the study itself. Okay? And from this, you can already give a good interpretation from different social phenomena happening to our society or to your community. At the same time, you can really understand the different concept of the societies cultural attributions, and different political identities. All of this is part of the social science itself. Okay? Lahat to pinag-aaralan ng social science. Ito yung mga factors, ito yung mga concept na gustong pag-aaralan ng disiplina ng social science. So, from this science, dun tayo magkakaroon ngayon ng social science. Okay? So, social science is the study of societal relationship. Ang gandang pakinggan, di ba? Sir, bakit? Bakit societal relationship? Always remember that humans are social being. Pag sinabi natin social being, ibig sabihin nito, tayong mga tao ay mahilig sa communication, mahilig tayong maghanap ng kapwa natin upang magpahayag ng ating feelings, ng ating ideas, ng ating opinions, ng ating reaction. And that is being a human. Okay? Walang tao ang kayang mabuhay mag-isa. Lahat tayo ay maghahanap at maghahanap ng makakausap in the near future or right now because humans are social being. Because humans are social being, we intend to have communication with other people. And from this communication, nagkakaroon tayo ng traditions and practices. Diba? Hindi natin naman malaya na habang lumalalim yung communication natin sa isa't isa, nagkakaroon natin tayo ng sarili nating tradition, nagkakaroon natin tayo ng sarili nating practice. Diba? Kung matatandaan nyo ng mga bata kayo, pag nakikipag-communicate kayo, minsan you use your hand gestures dun sa mga kaibigan ninyo para ma-express yung inyong special tradition and practice to each other. Okay? And also, it involves the thinking. 
'di ba? Na improve kung paano tayo mag-iisip sa mga bagay-bagay, na improve kung paano natin pina-process yung mga senaryo na nandoon sa ating society. Higit sa lahat, it is about tools. Of course, when you are communicating, when you are doing practices and when you're thinking, you are intent to create tools. Diba? You are intent to tr- to modernize tools on the first place. Kung dati, stone tools lang yung ginagamit ng mga tao, ngayon hindi na. Diba? Ang dami na nating modern gadgets para lang makipag-communicate sa ibang tao. And of course, organizations. Since hindi kaya ng tao ang mag-isa, bubuo siya at bubuo ng isang organization kung saan itong organization na to kaya niyang pakisamahan yung mga taong nandito at merong mutual benefits to each other. Kung hindi man mutual benefits, then ibang klase ng relationship yung gustong mangyari dun sa particular na community na yan. And of course, relationship. How you establish relationship to each other. Are you the type of person na makikipag-relationship kasi may kailangan ka sa kanya or relationship na parehas kayo makikinabang to it. And definitely, our nature as a human. Okay? Every person in this planet is unique. Every person in this planet has its own characteristic. Kaya nga, di ba sabi natin, lahat tayo ay unique at lahat yun ay may kaugnayan dun sa nature natin. Ganito ba talaga ang tao? Ganto ba talaga tayo makipag-communicate? Ganto ba talaga tayo makipag, makipag-interpret sa isa't isa or makipag-relate sa isa't isa? So lahat yon, it is all part of nature. Okay? Because of this vagueness sa sobrang lawak nung gustong talakayan ng social science, may iba't ibang klase na ng discipline or disiplina yung nagawa. Pag sinabi natin disiplina, my dear student, this is also similar to study. Okay? And from this concept, Nagkaroon na tayo ng culture, society, politics, and of course, ourself, individual. Okay? And this, and this concept leads to the development of social science. Okay? That is also the reason that social science is multidisciplinary on, ma- on manner. Ibig sabihin, sobrang lawak niya, at sa sobrang lawak niya, yung mga bagay na yun ay connected na sa isa't isa. Remember that social science has three main disciplines. You have anthropology, sociology, and political science. So let's start with the first one, anthropology. So anthropology is the study of humans, okay, on the simplified form, okay? Lahat ng tungkol sa tao ay pinag-aaralan sa anthropology. Example are regarding with our behavior as a human. Kung paano tayo magpakitungo sa ibang kalahi natin or sa iba pang species na matatagpuan sa ating planeta. And the next one is regarding with our biology. The structure of our body, the structure of our mind. Because our mind is the one that have the ability to communicate with others. Diba? And of course, our origin. Saan nga ba talaga nagmula ang tao? Saan nag-umpisa yung existence ng tao sa mundo? And of course, our civilization. How different civilization begins. Diba? Ang daming civilization na yung exist sa ating planeta, pero yung isa't isa pa rin yung tanong natin, paano sila nagkaroon ng ganito kagandang civilization? compare the generations that we have. So, all of this concept is part of what we call anthropology. What are the goals of anthropology? The first goal of anthropology is to understand our biological origin. Yun sabi ko nga sa inyo kanina, isa yun sa mga gustong pag-aralan ng anthropology. Saan nga ba nagmula ang tao? By means of biology. Okay? Hindi lang haka-haka tungkol sa mga sabi-sabi or kwentong bayan. Dapat merong scientific na information or scientific data na nagpapatunay na dito tayo nagmula or sa ganito tayo nagmula. Okay? Second goal is to analyze our traits and our co-species. Okay? As we all know that there are many homonids 
existed to the timeline of our planet. Diba? Hindi lang naman tayo yung species ng tao na nabuhay dito sa ating planeta. Okay? So, lahat yun, tag-aaralan ng mga anthropologists. Titignan nila ano yung mga pinagkaiba-iba ng mga species ng tao na ito at ano yung mga importanteng traits nila na merong impact doon sa pagiging isang tao. The third one is to recognize the ways of humans. How humans act. Paano tayo nagkaroon ng isang society? Of course, lahat yung mag sa tao. Paano tayo gagawa ng mga bagay-bagay bilang isang tao? At paano yung pamumuhay ng isang tao? So all of that is part of anthropology. And then understand the impact of this cultural significance to our civilization. Yung pag improve ba ng tao ay may kinalaman din sa improvement ng civilization. So that is also part of anthropology. Personalities in anthropology. Of course, the first one is Charles Darwin. Sir, bakit si Charles Darwin kasama sa anthropologies or anthropology development? Remember that Charles Darwin is the first one to establish the theory of evolution. Diba? He, on, he believes that we are coming from one origin itself, or yung tinatawag nating ancestral species, kung saan lahat ng may buhay sa mundo ay dito nagmula. Kaya from this particular theory ni Charles Darwin, doon nag-umpisa lalo na mag-strive yung iba pang scientist, yung iba pang anthropologist na pag-aralan. Saan nga ba nagmula ang tao? At bakit nagkaroon ng iba't ibang klase ng species ang tao? So, kay Charles Darwin yun lahat nag-ugat. And, of course, Edward Burnett Taylor. Okay, according to Taylor, progression of civilization. Sa bawat pag-evolve ng tao, sa bawat sa bawat pag-improve ng species ng tao, nag-improve din daw yung civilization natin. So ibig sabihin, may connection yung intellectual ability natin dun sa improvement ng civilization natin. The more modernized civilization, the more higher intellectual capabilities ang meron sa isang tao. Yan yung according kay Taylor. Anthropology is Franz Boas. Okay, Franz Boas is also known as the father of modern anthropology because he integrates scientific method on the study of anthropology. Kung dati, hakahaka, opinion, but nung dumating si Franz Boas, inaplayan ng scientific method para mas lalong lumalim, mas lalong maging factual yung pag-aaral natin regarding with human being and the humankind. And lastly is Henry Otley Bayer, the father of Philippine anthropology. Okay? So, si Otley Bayer or Henry Otley Bayer, siya yung nag-establish ng Department of Anthropology sa University of the Philippines. At the same time, dinedicate niya talaga yung buhay niya sa pag-aaral ng Philippine culture sa mga sinaunang tribo dito sa Pilipinas. Kaya, binigyan siya ng ganong klaseng distinction dito sa ating bansa. Okay? Perspectives in anthropology. Pag sinabi naman nating perspective, this is our point of view. Paano ba natin tinitignan ang anthropology? Ano ba yung mga pananaw na dapat nating i-consider in anthropology? Okay? First perspective is holism. Okay? So this is an approach wherein you see the holistic point of view ng mga bagay-bagay. Ibig sabihin, hindi lang pwedeng opinion nung nabuhay nung panahon na yon or istorya nung nabuhay nung ng panahon na yon dapat tinignan mo din ano yung mga kagamitan na natuklasan dun sa civilization na yon tumutugma ba yung kanyang statement doon sa mga artifacts na natagpuan dun sa civilization na yon so in that manner nagiging holistic tayo okay another way is cultural relativism kung saan dinidifferentiate natin or nire-relate natin yung culture sa isa't isa. Ano yung pinagkaiba nila? Ano yung pinagkapareho naman nila sa isa't isa? On this manner, napiprevent natin yung racial discrimination. Kasi nakikita natin na, ah, lahat pala ng kultura sa isa't isa ay konektado. Diba? Tandaan natin na hindi lang sa Egypt merong pyramid. Almost lahat ng sinaunang civilization, lahat sila may pyramid. Pero wala namang means 
na magko-communicate sila kasi malalayo sila eh. So magtataka ka paano sila nagkaroon ng unifying idea na dapat may pyramid tayo. Okay? So makikita natin na related pala sa isa't isa, no? Okay? Babalik tayo kay Tyler. Sabi nga di ba ni Tyler sa pag-improve ng intellectual ability ng tao na i-improve din yung civilization. Okay? Next one is field working or what we call immersion. You are the one that go to that particular space or area, then you need to discover, you need to study that particular culture. Okay? Diyan nag-umpisa ngayon yung tinatawag nating archaeology, one of the branches of anthropology. In is sociology. Okay, from the term itself, social means society. But this time, don't be confused with social science. Ang social science, it is a general point of view on studying the society, while sociology is the detailed part of studying society. Okay? Society, on sociology, it discusses the following. Okay? It studies family, since family is the basic unit of society. Social structure, our social classes, social changes, and social phenomena. So all of that is being uh, being studied by the sociology. So what are the goals of sociology? First one is to unlock social patterns through analysis of social events, structures, and changes in the society. In that manner, ma-analyze nilang mabuti. Ano ba yung mga nangyari na nung sinuunang panahon na pwede pa ring maging relevant ngayon sa panahon natin? At higit sa lahat, nakikita natin, ah, ganito pala yung society eh. May pattern din pala siyang sinusundan. Understand different social behavior na may epekto individually or sa community natin. And individual behavior in its impact to the society. So, who are the key personalities in sociology? You have Auguste Comte, the father of sociology. Siya yung nagbigay ng term na sociology sa sociology. Siya din yung nagsuggest na dapat merong separate na science na nag-aaral ng society. Okay? And you have Emil Durkheim, integrates empirical research to social analysis. So, parang si Franz Boas din. Okay? Apply natin yung science para sa pag-aaral ng society. Hindi pwedeng opinion lang natin, hindi pwedeng sinabi lang natin na ganito yung nangyayari. So, what are the perspectives of sociology? In anthropology, you have the three, you have holism, cultural relativism, and fieldworking. On perspectives of sociology, you have the first one. Functionalist perspective. It analyze the interconnectedness and sustainability of and balance of the society. So, kapag hindi na nagkaroon ng balance, hindi na interconnected, hindi na sustainable, doon na papasok yung tinatawag nating dysfunctional society. Okay? On that manner, nagkakaroon tayo ng standard ngayon. Ano ba ibig sabihin ng magandang society sa hindi magandang society? Next perspective is the conflict perspective. This is a battle of interests and competitions. Ibig sabihin, paglabanin nga natin, tignan natin kung anong mangyari pag pinaglaban natin. Ano ba yung magiging result pagkatapos ng conflict na yun? Magkakaroon ba ng good result or bad result? So you are also studying the history na rin. Okay? Hindi lang about society, but also the history. Symbolic interactionist perspectives, you are more deviating to the individual. Ikaw, bilang isang tao, ano ngayon yung epekto mo dun sa society? Kunyari, ako, part ng society, ano kayo mangyari kapag hindi ako naging performer? Ano kayo mangyari kapag hindi ako nakipag-participate sa society? What will happen to the society itself? Example na lang natin, to my profession as a teacher. Ano mangyari kapag wala ng teacher? Okay, symbolic interactionist perspective. The next discipline of social science is political science. It is the one that studies governance, decision making, and thinking. So all of that is about political science. So polit political science is not just about leadership. 
or managing a particular society. It is about decision making. How you will create decision, how you will make decision, and how you will implement decision. At the same time, how you process this particular decision. And what are the goals of political science? Based to Portel in 2018, it will add up to the political knowledge. Karagdagan dun sa field ng political science. Dumadami lalo yung reference natin regarding with political knowledge and arts of politics. Yan, yung arts of politics. How we will establish good political system. As we all know, you have the majority of the political system, such as democracy, federalism, monarchy, and so and so forth. So, ano naman kaya ngayon yung pwede pa, di ba? Na pwede pa natin gawin for the society. Dun papasok ngayon yung arts of politics. Improvement of our thinking process, since politica, political science is the study of decision making, well, ni-improve niya din kung paano mag-process yung utak natin. Kasi pinag-aaralan niya kung paano mag-isip at paano gumawa ng desisyon ang mga tao. And this is for the betterment of the society. A better political system, better economic, economic power. At the same time, it is or will also have a great impact to the social services of the particular society. Key personalities for political science. First one is, of course, Plato, the writer of the Republic. Okay, The major impact of the Republic is that it is the one that established justice and moral standards for political arena. Kumbaga si Plato yung nagsabi na, or siya yung nag-establish na ito dapat yung gagawin niya bilang isang politician, bilang isang tao, bilang isang leader. Okay? Followed by Aristotle, wherein, sabi niya nga, man is a political animal. Because of this statement, or because of this particular logic of Aristotle, mas lalo niyang pinaprove na merong malaking parte ang tao sa isang lipunan. Okay? Kaya nga, from republic, nag-transition tayo to democracy. Doon niya mas lalong pinahalagahan na lahat ng tao ay may boses at dapat yung mga boses na yon ay naririnig ng society ng lipunan. So what are the perspectives in political science? First one is about family. Diba sabi ko nga sa inyo kanina, family is the basic unit of society. At ito din ang unang nag establish kung paano gumawa ng decision ang bawat members ng society. Kaya number one factor talaga si family. Gender. Okay? What will be your role in the future? Are the roles assigned to you by the society or, or the roles that you want to become in the future? Religion. Okay? It also affects how we made decision based to our moral standards. Diba? Yun yung major purpose ng religion. Eh. That is our moral compass. Race and ge geographical location, your culture, okay? how you put in traditions, what are your practices regarding on that particular aspect of decision making. Social classes. Okay? Of course, better social classes, better network of people. And better network of people, better managing of decisions. And lastly, will be the importance of social science. Ano abang halaga ng araling panlipunan sa ating mga tao? Eh, I'm sure, alam na alam nyo na naman to. Yung una, it is for the improvement of the different sources of knowledge. And deeper understanding about humanity and its role to the world. Mas lalo natin naunawaan yung sarili natin at higit sa lahat, naunawaan natin na, ah, ito pala yung tao eh. Ito pala yung role niya sa buong mundo. Hindi lang sa buong mundo, pati sa universe. Understanding the uniqueness of different cultures of the world, one of the greatest uh, contribution of social science na-appreciate natin yung pinagkaiba ng mga kultura natin kung ano yung mga magaganda dun sa culture ng bawat community, ng bawat society. And, of course, for the improvement of our society. 
and enrichment of our skills specifically how we give interpretation how we give our analysis to the social issues or different social changes or social phenomena happening to the society so for our discussion forum this will be the end part of this discussion or video lesson you need to complete this statement and then write your answer to the comment bar. If there is no social science, the world will be blank. So you need to continue that statement and then your answer should be written on the comment bar. The submission or the deadline of submission of this particular activity will be until Friday. I will post the grading system and the, mechan and the criteria of grading for this particular activity. Okay, I hope that you have learned so much for this lesson. And if you have questions, please don't hesitate to message me. Thank you so much and see you to the next video lesson. Ito'y nagtatapot sa ating video lesson. Sana marami kang natutuhan sa ating lesson ngayon at higit sa lahat na isang puso mo ang iyong mga natutuhan. Kung meron pang mga natitirang katanungan o mga information na magulo, huwag may hiyang itanong sa akin. I-PM ako sa aking personal messenger o di kaya naman ay isulat ang inyong mga tanong sa ating discussion forum. Maraming salamat! Kita-kit sa susunod! Paalam!